Hello, my friends, and welcome. Welcome back to another session with the older man. Today, I got something a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more fun. Today, I want to talk about male friendships. Yeah, gentlemen, you have no idea how important it is for you to form good, solid friendships as early as you can and as young as you can. I always remember this one statement. It is impossible to make good old friends. Yeah, age and time is an important part of forming massive bonds between individuals. And it doesn't matter whether it's with a female or a male. But in this respect, I want you guys to focus on forming bonds with other men. I assure you without a doubt, my friends, that it will benefit you in the long run. So that's what I want to get into today. Listen, guys, before we proceed, you know what I always like to ask. Please give me a thumbs up on this video. Yeah, like the video coming in, because I know you guys always forget when you reach the end. You always feel good and excited and you just want to leave. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't already. And you know what I'm going to ask you to do. Go over to askanolderman.com. Book a session with yours favorite, your favorite older guy. Yeah, daddy. Uncle, yeah, I'm here for you, man. Whatever problems you're having, whatever challenges life throw at you, it's always best to get some advice from an older man. And of course, join our community. It's free to do so right now. I'm building it slowly. Have some patience with me, guys. So those of you who have joined so far, you have seen that I have started the fitness journey. I'm getting through that. <laughs> yeah. I, my weight's down. My weight is coming down. I just haven't had time to actually put out more videos to build it as fast as I would like to do. Okay, but that's coming. So a lot more exciting things coming, I can guarantee you. I have made the transition into doing YouTube full-time, so as soon as I get into a rhythm, things are going to start ramping up a lot faster. So stay with me, guys. Stay with me. So back to today's main subject, developing good old Friends, forming bonds with other men over long periods of time will ensure that when you reach your older age, when the women have deserted you, when life has treated you like crap, it's always good to just have that guy in your corner, man. Trust me. Yes, it's vital. And ladies, the same thing applies to you. Bitch, I got to do. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Don't laugh, Arlene. I ain't got time for that shit. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah. She laughed. Did you hear her laughing? Yeah, I heard her laughing. She laughed. <laughs> she... I got... <laughs> Have I got time for that crap of hers? I guess no. I, apparently oh, she not. Does. She laughs. Did you see her laugh? She's like a prank caller. <clears throat> well, maybe she laughed the way you answered the phone. What the hell does she want to tell me? And I have got my pajamas on, my robe. I've got to get dressed and everything. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and get things together I'm going to forget. Maybe she was just calling to say good morning. Well, bullshit. She calls and she goes, ha, 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 of course, it's best to have a man, but the reality of it is, if you've got a good woman in your corner, it is the best thing to have. But in this video, I'm talking to the men. And the reason why this prompt me is for two major reasons. You know, ever since I left high school, I've always had three to four men that are always there with me. Never lose touch. Even if we don't talk to each other for three months. Actually, it rarely goes longer than that for these three guys, but we are always there. I have three guys that are guaranteed that if I'm in trouble, if I need any financial help, if I need any anything at all, I can always call on one of these three guys that I know they're there. They're jumping on a plane. They're sending me money. They're doing whatever they can to help me out. And in turn, they know that I got their back. If they need me and I can help, I'm there. 
Yeah. So I understand the value of having other close friends right there with me. And you know, when I tell men this privately, a lot of men say, man, I wish I had that. I wish I had a guy like that. I wish I had men like that. Most guys say, I wish I had just one person that I could rely on like that, that I, that I had that much trust. And it really breaks my heart to understand that most men don't have that. These are guys that I grew up with from age 13, 12, 13, when we were in high school, they're still there, man. <laughs> yeah. And we're in different parts of the world. We're in different parts of the world, but we have a WhatsApp group that we constantly either throw in memes, jokes. We're making sure that we're there for the birthdays. We're making sure that we're there. If any, any problems come up, they know that I am there and I feel so comfortable that I can call on these guys as well. And so this brought me to this particular story I found this morning that came across my feed. This is what triggered me to do this video. And it's a feel-good piece. So buckle up, get some tissue, because this is going to be a good one. All right? I'll go into the litter box now, are you? Yeah. Wal Hopkins is 100 years old. Vern Roberts, 99. They've been neighbours for 74 years, and every day they meet for a chinwag at the hole in the fence. You there, Wal? Yeah. Oh, hi. hi. Yeah. We get up quite well. We're more than just neighbours, we're mates. In West Footscray in Melbourne, these two have lived long, wonderful lives. Their homes are the mirror image. Their kids grew up playing next door. And now Wall's waiting for Vern to catch up and reach a century two. Just take one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy answer, wasn't it? At our age, we probably never thought we'd ever get to this age. But And Wally's had his 100th birthday in May and... Mine's coming up in October. The great-grandfathers have so much in common. Born five months apart, they lived two streets away and went to the same primary school. We lost contact during the war. But found each other years later when they poked their heads over the fence. When he introduced himself, I said, I think I know you. We look after each other, <laughs> make sure everyone's okay, that we're both okay. I suppose we worry about each other, put it that way. And they sure do look after each other. They've got a system. We want to talk to each other. We ring the phone once, one ring. He comes out and we'll have a talk. Or if I want to talk to him, I'll give him one ring. One ring means meet at the fence. Two or more rings means let's just have a chat on the phone. Well, saves him coming out uh, unnecessarily. But their greatest system yet has got to be this. We share the paper. It's waterproof, saves them money, and it's pretty darn clever. The PVC piping has got a little, a little round black thing on it, so it was only on one side, so when it... When I finish with it, I turn the piping around so that he knows that the paper's in the fence. We're saving over two hundred dollars each. That was yeah, man. You see, you see. Don't care how old you get, man. You know the value of a dollar. All right. <laughs> These guys share a newspaper. The beautiful thing about that is that they're close together. This is what's making these men live so long. It's that relationship because part of who we are as a species is the ability to peer bond with another individual. And yes, the best thing is to have it with a woman, right? Because you do get sex as well when it comes to a woman if you're heterosexual. But the beautiful thing is the companionship is still valuable regardless if the person is a sexual partner or not. All studies have shown that people who have long-term companionship with another individual, which is sincere, usually live longer. Now, these two, their wives already pass. However, they're still living on. And I strongly feel that this is one of the reasons why because they have been bonded for a long, long time. It was your idea for the hole in the fence? Yeah, my idea for the hole in the fence. Wall and Vern lost their wives a year apart. They too became best of friends. 
She was the love of my life. We, we had a lovely marriage. Wall credits his wife Evelyn with his longevity. Asked her to come out for the first time, which was a New Year's Eve. That means you're going to get a kiss at midnight. Yeah. There's not much Wall hasn't done. He was an engineer at the same place for his whole working life. He's got Scouting's highest honour and has been awarded an Order of Australia. You were a VFL umpire for decades. Yeah. You made legend status. That's right. I'm the oldest one alive. Let's it's see a... if you've still got it in you. And it needs a bit of action. Vern printed money in his early years, went to war as a flight rigger. Not bad looking rooster, not in 43, as 19 years of age. And ended his working life as a taxi driver. A dad to two, Vern's advice for life is simple. The two things to remember in life. Very important, caring to your parents. And secondly, Treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. You only get out of life what you're prepared to put into it. And that's true as I'm sitting here. You know, you always listen to the older people's life advice. And one thing I've learned, it is so simple. And this is what I always tell people, you know, the advice that I give you guys here, it isn't rocket science. It isn't anything big. It isn't life changing. But what it does is it reminds you, this is the problem, is that most of us forget what is important in life because we're so distracted by the amount of crap that comes across our screens in our life. We cannot move these days without being completely bombarded by television ads, internet ads. You walk down the street, it's just constantly being bombarded by somebody or something trying to tell you what you should think. So we get distracted and in that distracting and in and in all of that distraction, that trash, that clutter of information, we forget what's important. The simple thing, treat other people like you would like to be treated. And if every woman and man would learn that one simple lesson and hold it and live it, this world would be awesome because you wouldn't treat someone like shit simply because you wouldn't want to be treated like shit. You wouldn't take more from a person that you do you wouldn't want that person to do it to you but in this ever nasty environment everybody's looking out for number one themselves nothing else matters and that's the scary part of the world we live in all right let's finish up what Vern has to say and secondly treat others as you would like to be treated yourself you only get out of life what you're prepared to put into it and that's true as I'm sitting here. Wall says keeping good friendships is as good as any medicine. And he struck gold. For sure, he struck gold. Just having one good friend, that is vital. I'm fortunate enough to have three. And that, my friends, is amazing. I'm also fortunate to have five sisters that I can share a great life with. I know that they have my back. It doesn't matter what. I don't know why most people don't have that. My sisters run a lot of my financial affairs and deal with anything. And I can call on them for anything. I never have to mistrust my sisters. Never. I know that they got my back 100%. And they know the same thing as vice versa. And I talk to a lot of people who say they would never trust their family members. Never. And I just say to myself, am I that lucky to have five sisters and three close friends? Eight people in my life that I know that I can call on 100%. And of course, my wife. My wife is the same. I know that I can call on her and she got my back as well. And I'm talking about me. Yeah, I'm talking about real responsibilities. I think that a lot of us don't put any effort into maintaining these relationships. Everybody looks at everything as a temporary experience, a temporary life. Even when I'm here in an expat-based society where we all know that we might not even end up here for a while, 
I still have two very close people here in Dubai. One is a Ukrainian, one is an Indian. <laughs> who, who I know that even in our older age, I will never lose track with these two guys, okay? Because they have become really close to me. And we have shared so many experiences over the last 16 years that we've been here. We talk about, you know, oh, we make sure that we, when we get older, we find a place that we can sit on the beach and have a beer together. Yeah, these are things that we talk about. So all I'm saying to you, gentlemen and ladies, find a person, build a bond, build a relationship. Look at it as an investment in not only your mental health, but your long-term peace and prosperity. Because a good friend in your old age is invaluable. You can't beat it. Just like these two gentlemen have demonstrated. So let me just read a few comments from these, just so that you guys can get a good flavor of it's just not me that having the feels, the good, the feel goods. Carmel Zinil says, what a beautiful story and how good do these two men look? Actually brought tears to my eyes listening to their story. So sad that most people these days don't even know who their next door neighbors are. Exactly. When I moved in here, the first thing I did was I introduced myself to my neighbors. He was quite taken back, actually. But to this day, I know him. I know him, you know. Overdose of memes said, the 99-year-old looks 70. <laughs> Somebody responded, I know, right? My thoughts exactly. Champers24 says, when you know someone is looking after you and you have social contact, especially when you're older, it's amazing how it improves longevity. Loneliness, it is a killer in old age these days. Not like when families live together next door in the same street, etc. There was a reason that process worked as everyone looked out for each other. So sad those days are gone now. Miss the connected neighborhood I had growing up in the inner city of Sydney. Best childhood ever. Best neighbor. Yeah, unfortunately, we're now in apartments. The word itself says it all. Apart. Living apart. Part. Yeah, we've been fragmented and it's a horrible, horrible way that society is now existing. We used to be a village. Now we live in, in apartments. Yeah. CC Bond says, what a beautiful friendship. We need to be more like these two gentlemen, always caring for each other. Yeah. Radio Boy said, what an awesome story in this day and age of depressing news and events. Two good Aussie blokes. Bronze and Beautiful North said, oh gosh, aren't they gorgeous? Love the handshake at the hole in the wall. The Colorful Tribe said, stories like this have the ability to heal the world. Wall and Vern, you are warmed my heart on this very cold winter's day. Jules Payne says, absolutely beautiful. Every Australian needs to take a leaf out of these beautiful, amazing gentlemen's book of life. Bless your heart. Yes, my friends, this is the thing about life, man. I wish other people would look at all of these positive examples of other individuals and just learn from it. Okay? I hope you guys felt this and learned something today. Find a friend. Find a friend. Find someone that you know that you can probably have a good relationship with, male or female. But hold on to it. Learn how to nurture it. Be the person that you know will be good for someone else. And I can assure you that person will embrace you in the same way. Okay, my friends, please, thumbs up, subscribe, log in to Ask an Older Man, book a session. And until next time, my friends, remember, whenever in doubt, always, always, Ask an Older Man. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.